fixed instrument is called a sounding rod, something built on some type of technology where it's just a, a rod that drops down to the surface, rests on the channel bottom, and you measure the drop. How far did that rod go? It could be as simple as a, a manually deployed, permanently mounted, but manually deployed sounding rod. It could be on a winch that you drop down that's got some type of cable counter. You drop it to the bottom during the flood, you bring it back up. A company in New York developed and in fact patented this device. This is called the Briscoe Monitor. It's made by Cayuga Industries to automate that process. So this is a scale model of one. You've got what was a, an eight inch angle iron protecting the sliding rod, which was connected to a cable around a uh, counter. So as the cable dropped, it pulled this, a sensor wheel here with a, a magnetic sensor that recorded on this readout how far the, the sounding rod had dropped. While Briscoe and Cayuga Industries never took this the next step that I'm aware of to telemetering it, anytime you bring something out into a wire feed of some type, you can typically then start to telemeter the data. The way it was designed and the way some of these have been installed is pretty much just as you see. So the operator would go out, he'd read the meter, and it's, it's showing some depth that that sounding rod has dropped. One of the limitations of any sounding rod would be simply that you're going to measure the maximum scour, right? Because there's no way for this sounding rod to come back up. So when the rod drops, the scour hole develops, the rod drops, it stays put even if the scour hole refills. That's not necessarily an issue because you've measured what you wanted to know from a scour monitoring perspective, the maximum scour. If it scours deeper in the future, it's going to erode out and drop down again. So it's just something to know that with this type of technology versus, say, sonar, where sonar would record the, the scour and the refill, that's not physically possible with this type of instrument, as well as some others that we'll, we'll be talking about. So it's, it's very simple technology. It's very robust. It, there's not much to go wrong with it. The only problems that we've noted are in a fine bed material, because of the, the vibration of this rod, if nothing else, from the von Kormann of vortices that shed off of any round cylinder and flow, you get some natural augering of that rod into a fine bed. And so this was typically recommended for coarse bed materials, riprap installations, and in fact, some of the installations that are shown on the board here under sounding rods included largely installations to monitor riprap piles. Those were ones that were done in New York. So this type of technology, the Briscoe monitor, is recommended primarily for coarse bed channels where you're not necessarily interested in refill. You can always go back out after the event and do like say a drop line measurement and get the refill condition, but you're not going to get it automated. In contrast with sonar where you get the scour refill, but the sonar best application really is for, as, as the model we showed you, was in a tidal environment. Because the debris impact forces on a sonar, even if you try to ruggedize it, may not be as good as this. The other limitation here you can imagine is that as this rod drops and gets farther and farther down, you get a pretty good moment arm acting on the sliding collar here. And it tends to start to bind and it can't drop because of the loading, the lateral loading, the water exerts on this exposed rod prevents it from physically dropping. And so typically, and, and Briscoe built them up to about 10 feet in length that's about as much as I would expect to be operational. So if you had a scour hole that was going to be much more than, than 10 feet, when this rod drops out, what's going to happen? It'd just keep right on going and you'd lose the instrument. It'd just drop out of the bottom, pull the cable with it. So a couple limitations, but like all the instruments we have, everything has advantages and limitations. As long as you understand what they are, you can design the right.